Well, good afternoon, brethren. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to everyone tuned in on the stream. My family and I had a great feast uh, on Jekyll Island, and one of the things we actually loved most about this feast uh, was the neighborhood that we were staying in. It was a quiet neighborhood, and there was no through streets, so there was very little traffic going through. And the kids, um, and additionally, there was a lot of um, feast goers in the neighborhood. It seemed like most of the houses were rented by members of the church, and there was a lot of kids in the neighborhood. So kind of a daily occurrence, a scene that kept replaying um, after services was the kids out in the neighborhood playing in the street. I remember one scene in particular one evening, uh, Mr. Bud Kareliason had, had walked down the street, and we were sitting on the porch chatting, and then all the kids came around the corner. There were kids on scooters, kids running, they were all laughing. Uh, one young man was actually dancing down the middle of the street joyously. It was a beautiful scene, and it's not one that I'll forget anytime soon, and it really reminded me of Zechariah 8. It can be hard sometimes going back after the feast, though. Back to school, uh, to work, and maybe back to some of the worries that we left behind for a bit. But part of our calling at this time, no matter our age, is to make godly decisions in an imperfect world and to be representatives not of that world around us, but of the kingdom of God. Today for the sermonette, we'll review a famous story from the Bible, a story about a family and a child that displayed great courage in the midst of an evil society. We'll look at the story of Moses as a baby and how his family acted with courage with faith and with love to protect him. And for our many children here, the main heroine or one of the main heroines of this story isn't an old person like me or like your parents. The hero is named Miriam, and our best guess is that she would have been in between seven and 12 years old when she saved the life or helped save the life of her baby brother. So we'll focus in on Exodus two today and we'll start in Exodus one. If you wanna to turn to Exodus one and verse eight, We'll get the backstory here. It says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened that they join our enemies and fight against us, and so go up out of the land. So they set taskmasters over them and afflicted them with burdens. And they, the Israelites, built for the Pharaoh supply cities. And then verses 8 through 22 are a summary of about a 50-year period. We see that the Israelites have quickly gone from being favored and tolerated to persecuted. This change happened quickly for the Israelites, and change in the world can happen quickly as well. The Egyptians systematically made the living situation worse for the Israelites. They put the Israelites into forced labor. They attempted to destroy the nation by eliminating the male children, the boy babies. But the midwives feared God, and they saved the boy babies, the male children, and God blesses the midwives. So Pharaoh orders all the male babies to be cast into the Nile. And this is the world that Moses was born into. It was an evil time where life was not valued, and it was also a dangerous time for Moses to be born. Picking up the story in Exodus verse 2, it says, A man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. And so Exodus lightly describes Moses' family, but they aren't called by name. We get their names and, and the composition of the family from Numbers. So if you want, you can jot down Numbers 26 and verse 59. Uh, number six, 20, uh, Numbers 26 and verse 59 says, The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And to Amram, she bore Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. So Moses' parents were Amram and Jochebed, and their sister, or his sister, Moses' sister in the story, would have been Miriam. In verse 2, it says, So this woman, Jochebed, conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. Now, as a parent, we know that there's nothing in life quite like when our babies are born and we meet them for the first time. And that also extends to their siblings, right? I'll never forget when Ben met James for the first time, and then when Ben and James met their baby sister for the first time. It's beautiful memories to me, and the love is instant. In this case, though, their new addition, 
you know, the, the, the love would certainly be there, but also would be pain and fear because this new addition to their family was born into mortal danger. So they did the right thing and the brave thing, and they hid him for three months. Exodus 2 and verse 3 tells us that when Moses' mother could no longer hide him, she built a little raft or a boat, and she put the, ch the, she put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the riverbank. In verse 4 it says, and his sister, and that's Miriam, stood afar off to know what would be done with him. I think it's interesting, the Bible doesn't tell us whether she had instructions or whether she came up with this scheme on her own, but regardless, it was a very brave thing to do. In verse 5, it says, Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw, that's the, the boat, the ark or the boat, among the reeds, she went and sent her maid to it. In verse 6, And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. We can see God's hand clearly in the story at this point. Our God in Isaiah is described as wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And that first word, wonderful, means full of wonders, or full of miracles. It's part of his essence and his very character. And he works a tremendous miracle here for Moses and for his family, honoring his family's faith according to his purpose. This was an Egyptian princess, a member of the royal family that had set the unjust laws in the land that condemned this baby to death. But here she has compassion on the Hebrew baby. Proverbs 21 tells us that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and like rivers of water, he turns it whichever way he wishes. In this case, God turns the heart of the princess towards mercy, where there could or even should have been no mercy at all. In verse 6, Miriam comes forth. It says, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? I think this is a great example for all of us. We can look at Miriam's example and see that she loved her brother and that love motivated her to act courageously. She, molded, she made a bold suggestion to the princess. I think sometimes at work or school or with friends, you know, things go down a path that we're not comfortable with or we know is wrong. And sometimes at work, I run into situations where the plan might be to tell a white lie at a meeting just to make that meeting go a little easier in the eyes of a customer. Our children are dealing with Halloween right now, and there's activities at school or in their neighborhoods that they need to opt out of or avoid. Now, I've heard that Miriam acted beyond her years here, but if you look around the church, you'll see children acting bravely all the time. It takes courage to raise our hand, to opt out, and to choose a different path from our peers, and our kids have to do that a lot. Now here Miriam faces a much bigger decision than uh, what most of us face day to day or week to week, and it took courage to make a suggestion, a better course of action, and God takes care of the rest. In verse 8, it says, And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother, Jochebed. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me. And I, will never give you, or, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of water. So God works it out. Not only is Moses' life saved, but his mother is able to care for him and remain a major part of his life in his youth. And she's even paid to do it in times that were hard for the Israelites. And of course, this was all according to God's ultimate purpose. Moses goes on to lead Israel out of captivity, and his siblings, Miriam and Aaron, grow up, and they play hugely important roles in God's deliverance of the nation. And this story is only 10 verses long, but there's much we can learn. So we'll have two points in summary today. Uh, point number one is that Moses' family acted in godly love. I think the church um, over the years has a really beautiful way of summarizing the character and the nature of God the Father and Jesus Christ. So I'll summarize here. It's that God the Father and Jesus Christ have a character of holiness, righteousness, and absolute perfection, and that their character can be summed up in one word as love, with love defined as outflowing loving concern. Moses' family displayed this godly love, outflowing loving concern for each other and for, it, for love for each other and for Moses, and this motivated their actions. They loved God, and they loved each other. 
and they loved each other and they loved God more than the society around them, more than the risk that they were willing to take, and more than all of Pharaoh's evil laws, laws that contradicted the laws of God. 1 John 4 says that perfect love casts out fear, and Moses' family was willing to act out of love rather than fear and lay down their own lives to protect Moses. And this makes them an incredible example also of living faith. Point number two is that Moses' family acted in living faith. Like so many Bible stories, the core of this story is a family knowing the right, choosing the right, and doing the right, like Mr. Clore so often says. One of the most famous chapters in the Bible is Hebrews 11. Let's turn there. I've heard Hebrews 11 called, uh, see, the Faith Hall of Fame and the Hall of Faith chapter. And the section on Moses is interesting to me because it starts out not with his faith, but the faith of his family. Let's turn to Hebrews 11 and verse 23. Hebrews 11 and verse, 20, uh, verse 23 says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw him as a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. We've also read today about Miriam's role. She acted in great courage, and God worked the rest out. Brethren, God is building a family, and God loves our families. The story of Moses' birth shows us that God works powerfully through families. And he worked through a child and a sister to save Moses' life, all according to his purpose and plan. In our own lives and within our families and our church family and in other circles that we travel in, we can strive to apply similar godly love, living faith, and courage to the situations we find ourselves in and see what wonders God works out for us.